Good night, all kings and queens, all gods and goddesses. I am B. Floss the God. And tonight I just want to share two dream experiences that I had with Tupac Shakur and with Neville Goddard, right? Now these dreams happened on separate occasions a couple months ago. But I just decided to share them because, you know, we all have dreams, whether we uh, remember them or not, you know, but there's always those dreams that stand out to us, right? And two of these dreams um, stood out to me, you know? They were very brief, but because of the people, and not that I'm putting them on a pedestal or anything, but I appreciate their works while they were, while they were here on earth in the physical, right? Now, I'm going to start with Tupac first. Right now, I remember in this dream, I was walking. I was walking up a flight of stairs, right? Walking up some steps, and as I was walking up these stairs, I remember seeing Tupac sitting on the same steps, right? But he was sitting out between the legs of a woman, right? And she was basically, you know, like rubbing his bald head and stuff. Right from what I could remember, and as I was walk, and as I was walking up these flights of stairs, right? Oh, and he had on he had on a suit as well at that time. He didn't he wasn't wearing the bandana as you can see right here on his on his head. He was actually wearing a suit a suit and tie. For some reason I don't I don't know why, but that was how that is how it was in the, in the, in the dream, right? And as I was walking up these flights of steps, and I came closer to him. I was like, yo, but like, I wasn't like freaking out like how a fan, like how a fan would be, right? Because I was a, I'm well, I'm still a big fan of, of Tupac Shakur, but you know, I wasn't freaking out. You know, it was just like, yo, and um, he gave me a, a pound, what y'all would call a pound, but we call it a knock, where you fold your fists, you know, and you tap the other person with their fists as well, as a sign of respect or salute, you know, like, yo, what's up? Right, and he was very friendly. He was like, you know, um, what's what's going on? The way he the way he was talking to me and how we were talking for that brief moment was like we knew each other in the physical, right? And Tupac died in ninety six, as you can see right here in nineteen seventy one till nineteen nineteen ninety six. And I never met Tupac in my life, and in the year to in the year nineteen ninety six when he died, I was seven years old because. I was born in 89, November. I was seven years old, you know. And at that time, I knew nothing about hip-hop. Right? And I'm from Barbados as well. And hip-hop is not our culture. And in, at, the, at that time too, hip-hop wasn't nowhere as big as it is today. Especially here in Barbados, you know. Right? But anyways, um, he basically asked me, you know, like, what was going on? Right? And I said, nothing much, man, you know? I'm just staying to myself, you know? In my car, as usual. Just just being by myself and working on myself. That kind of way, right? And he was like, you know, well, he smiled and he was like, that's the best thing to do, you know? Just to be by yourself and, you know, take time for yourself. That's the, that's the best way to go, right? And that's basically how the conversation went, right? It wasn't nothing, nothing else after that, you know? So I told him, yeah, man, you know, I'm basically just sticking to myself. And that is it, right? He was like, you know, well, that's cool. And then we pointed each other again, and he went and sat right back down again between the woman's legs, and that was about it, and I went about my way. You know, it was just something brief. It wasn't nothing long. That's how the conversation went, right? But it was very friendly and, and respectful in that, in that brief moment. And at that time, it just felt like we knew each other when he was here in the physical Right, but who knows? You never know. We probably knew each other in, in past life or something, whatever you wanna, whatever you wanna call it. You know, some people say um, we knew other people from the past life and what's not. You know, but who knows? You know, anything is possible. Right? No, never got hurt. I had a dream about him a couple months ago as well. Right? Now we don't usually write down. Um, my dreams, right? I don't usually write them down. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest, right? But I'm gonna start doing it. 
I'm going to start doing it as well because, you know, like, I would have dreams and stuff. But, to be honest, most of them I don't, I don't even remember, to be honest. Right? But the ones that I do remember, you know, they always stand out. Right? And I only, like, really start remembering most of my dreams when I had my, like, awakening, you know, and I started meditating and what's not, that kind of stuff, like, my dreams would get more vivid and, and more clear, right? And I would tend to have more dreams, right? But a lot of them, I can't remember them, to be honest, but, you know, the ones that I do remember are the ones that, that stand out. And two of these dreams of Tupac and Neville really stood out to me, right? Now, with Neville, um, we were basically in a house, and I would believe it was his home because at that at that time he was um, cleaning down the counters, he was wiping down the counters, right, the kitchen counters in this house, right, and he was wearing a blue shirt, a blue dress shirt, long sleeve dress shirt, and the the top button, the top part of the shirt was unbuttoned, like revealing his chest a bit. You know how the old school dudes, you know, used to do it back then, you know. They would have like the, the top part with the chest unbuttoned, showing the chest ears and what's not, right? So he had on a blue long sleeve shirt with the top part unbuttoned and a long blue jeans pants, right? Now for some reason I don't know why he was dressed like that and Tupac was the one wearing the suit. I thought it would actually be the other way around because back then in Neville's time, you know, like the 1930s, 40s, 50s, you know, those guys wore a lot of suits and a tie. But in my situation, now Tupac was wearing the suit and the tie. You know, and Neville was wearing like casual clothes, like, you know, like you probably would expect Tupac to wear. But anyhow, he was he was cleaning down the counters in the kitchen. And I can't remember the conversation in detail, to be honest with you, but I knew the I knew what the concept was around, right? And it was basically I was basically asking him questions about you know manifesting from what i could remember right and he was giving me like these short answers not in a disrespectful way but like you know how abdullah was responding to him when he wanted to go to barbados you know when he was telling abdullah um he really wants to go to barbados you know and abdullah would tell him um who's talking about going to barbados you are already in barbados and he went first class and he was slammed the door in his face and what's not you know, just basically giving him a lot of short answers. You are already in Barbados, you know, that type of way, and not going into detail. It was something similar like that, right? And I remember the scene switch to where he was sitting in an armchair, and I was standing right in front of him, you know, basically asking him more questions and stuff. And he continued with the same thing, just giving me short answers, right? And then the dream ended, right? And that was basically it. So the dreams were very brief, you know, but, you know, they were still, they were still good dreams, from my opinion, especially people who they were. And as I said, I'm not putting them on a pedestal, but I appreciate what they did while they were here in, in the physical, you know, to part with his music and the message that they had, you know, most of his songs were, most of his songs were positive, you know, if, if you really take a listen. Right, he really meant good. He really wanted good for his people, right? Even though he could be a loose cannon at times, but you know, we're still human in this in this 3D, right? And never goddard with his works and his lectures, you know, giving us the raw truth. You know, I respect them for that. Right? So even though the, the dreams were brief, I really still appreciate, you know, and I remember them as soon as I woke up, I remember them. As I said, not really in detail the conversations with Neville, but you know, I remember what the concept was was around, was about, you know. So I just wanted to share these two dreams that I had of Tupac Shakur and and Neville Goddard, right? So with all that being said, I'm just sending my love, peace, joy, abundance, and prosperity out to everybody as well as usual. And if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe to my channel right now and click the notification bell for more videos to come. Alright, you know, I will have more dreams to share, 
more manifestation success stories and more topics to cover as usual all right so i am be floss to god peace and love and i'm out